Hey guys, how's it going? We've got something really different today. We're talking about a MacBook Pro. Why? Well, as a musician, I like to record my music, and maybe you do too, and you don't want to spend $1,200 on a new MacBook. So what I did was I got this old MacBook Pro. This is a 2012 15-inch. Um, it comes with a 2.3 gigahertz i7. This one only has 4 gigabytes of RAM and a slow hard drive, but we are going to upgrade that um, and work on that. Um, and then we're going to see... Is this computer still worth it in 2023 and beyond? Can this computer record audio very well? And can this computer do video editing? So I've seen some videos on this, but not specifically uh, this model and not specifically today. Uh, and I'm going to patch it with Ventura. That's the latest Mac OS using OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Um, so that's going to be a way to get us modern to use any application, really, that we want to. Um, what are we going to do? Well, we've got 16 gigabytes of RAM. We've got a 2 terabyte solid state disk. I've got a new battery. Um, I got a Wi-Fi antenna. So this one comes with a decent Wi-Fi antenna, but that one back behind it um, is able to do all, I believe, over 1 gigabit per second. I have 5 gigabit internet, so it'll make it a lot faster. I also have a new screen that we're going to install because as you can see, it's flashing this line. Um, that is not an indicator of a bad cable, as a lot of people would say. 99 times out of 100, it's a bad screen. Um, I do want to mention, where's the black bezel? This one doesn't have it. This was actually the upgraded high-resolution matte display. So this is pre-retina. This is before they came out with those ridiculously good-looking displays that we have today. Um, this one is a matte display, and really from any angle, you're going to get a really good image. It's kind of crazy. You don't really see screens like this anymore. Um, and I love it, but this one's broken. So I bought another one. Uh, it's in really good shape. We're going to install that too. So let's go ahead and get started and get all this stuff installed, and then we'll run some benchmarks. Um, act well, not benchmarks. We're actually going to use it. We're going to try to record some music. We're going to try to edit some video, and we're going to see if that is possible on a mid-2012, 15-inch, pre-retina with the 2.3 i7. Before we get started with the upgrades, I do want to go over this a little bit more. So this actually does have a disk drive. Most people take that drive out, and they'll install another hard drive. In fact, I have the adapter for it, but I'm not going to use it right here. So you can take the hard drive out, and then you can, or I'm sorry, the disk drive out, and you can put another hard drive in here. So you have two drives. I'm not going to do that because I'm using this for music. I want to be able to use that CD drive. Um, I like to rip lossless audio files, and being able to do it with the super drive will be a lot more convenient. If we spin it over to this side, um, we got some pretty cool stuff over here. And it's, it's horrible that I have to say that. Um, why the hell does nothing have... You don't even have a headphone jack on your phone anymore. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so going here right to left, we've got a headphone jack. We have a line in, which is awesome. You can use that for a, a microphone or whatever you want to input. It has an SD card reader. It has two USB 3.0 ports. It has a Thunderbolt port, which can be used for a myriad of things. I'm going to be using it uh, to output to my ultra-wide monitor. It has a FireWire port. Um, I have an iPod that uses FireWire. Believe it or not, I'm going to use this port for that. Um, and then you have an Ethernet port. That Ethernet port does 1,000 uh, megabits per second is the highest that it goes. Um, like I said earlier, I have 5 gigabit internet, uh, but I'm not going to waste my time trying to get a USB adapter for 5 gigabit if it even exists. I don't think it does. I had to buy an internal card for my PC. So, uh, and the most important feature of all, it has a glowing Apple logo. Isn't that wonderful? So, let's go ahead and crack this thing open and get started. First thing you're going to do is remarkably easy, and you'll find with this model it is nothing like working on a modern Mac. Uh, these are just Phillips heads, so get your Phillips screwdriver out, take these out. Keep in mind that three of these screws are longer than the others, so remember where those go when you put it back together. I'm going to take those out now. Once you've got all those out, you can lift the back plate off. Alright, so these old computers are amazing because of all this. I mean, look, look, it's all here. Memory battery, hard drive, disk drive, connector for the screen. I mean, it's ridiculously easy. I, I, uh, I love this. I hate that Apple doesn't do this anymore. All right, so now that we've got it open, uh, we probably need to do one thing. 
that is the most important. We've got to disconnect the battery before we do anything else. I'm going to say it again. Before you do anything else, when you're working on any MacBook, when you've got it open, disconnect the battery. Battery connector on this computer is right here. Just pull it off. Kind of tuck it away. All right, we're now safe to do whatever we want to do next. So I think we're going to do the easiest thing, uh, which is, well, you know what? I take it back. Let's take the battery out first. Um, because if we take the battery out completely, it'll give us more room to do everything else and then we don't have to worry that it's accidentally going to turn on or something if these pins make contact or something like that. So to do that, you're going to need a small tri-wing screwdriver and you're just going to go here and you're just going to take these screws out one at a time. So let's start with this one right here. Okay, I got that one out. I'll be back with the rest. The third tri-wing screw is hiding under this flap. Now the battery should just come out, and it does. Gross, it's all dirty. Pull that aside. Now that that's out of the way, we can more easily access the rest of this stuff. So let's get the memory right here. Just pull it like that, and then pull it out. This bottom one, pull it like that. And then you gotta pull this one so it lifts up. Pull it out. You install the memory in the reverse fashion. So you take your module here, do your best not to actually touch the black part. Kind of slide it in where it goes, right there. Push it down until it clicks. There you go. And you grab your other one. Okay, take it and stick it like that. Push it down until it clicks. Boom. Memory is installed. For the hard drive, um, you're going to take a Phillips screwdriver and you've got these four screws here holding the caddy in. So let's take those screws out. These screws do not come out all the way. They stay in the little rail. I guess they are called captive screws. Once you got all those, you should be able to just pull it out like that. There you go. Okay. Now once you got it going to pull this connector. This is your SATA. There we go. Got that out. There's the hard drive. This is a HGST one terabyte spinning disk. So high capacity, low speed. Today we're working with this. This is a team group AX2 two terabyte drive. These are very, very cheap on Amazon. I'm going to uh, leave a link in the description for all of these parts, but especially this hard drive. So here it is, the difference is astounding in, in weight. <laughs> it's crazy. Now, here's something else you gotta do. On the side of this hard disk, you can see there are four screws. You need those because that's how it fits into this uh, little caddy. Okay, I got all the four screws out and I stuck it in this hard disk. So. Next thing you're going to do is plug it in, like that, you're going to slide it in on this side. There's these little notches that these go into, like that, and you take the top one and set it on top. Okay, then you take your screwdriver, your Phillips, and you screw it back in. All right, now that we got that part done, uh, we would normally, if we had a good screen, this is the part where you install the battery. Um, but we have a screen problem that we need to replace, so we're going to do that. Uh, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure to do this, you have to undo this cable up here. I think it's called like the LVDS cable or something like that. I think you have to take the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module off as well uh, to access the screws that you need. So I'm also gonna, I, mean, I can do it now. Let's do something with these fans. Whee! That sounds all hilarious. Did you hear that? Maybe I'll use that sound effect in a song someday. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead now and uh, get the old screen off. 
the first thing you're going to do is you're going to lift up the LBDS cable. There's a little uh, metal piece down right here. Lift that up. And then pull the cable out. Grab the metal part and pull it. There we go. Once you've got that out of the way, it's kind of hard to see, but right here where my finger is, there is a screw. Let's see if I can zoom in. Nope, sorry. Right here, there is a screw, and you're gonna take your Phillips and you're gonna unscrew it, okay? And you're gonna pull that away. Now you're gonna disconnect the Wi Fi cable and the EyeSight cable for the camera. So, take that off and pull that out like that. All right, now there's two screws that are holding on this bracket here that's uh, holding on the Wi-Fi assembly. First one is right here. Second one is right here. Okay, once you got those out, you should be able to lift it up and then grab, try and grab the screw so you don't lose it. Once you've done that, you're gonna disconnect all four of these Wi-Fi antenna cables. So. You can do this different ways, but you can just lift it up like that and pull it. Once you've got those out, uh, you want to kind of unthread them from where they are in the assembly. So once you've got them all out, just pull it out. Now you're going to disconnect the Wi-Fi antenna bracket, which is right here. And you should be able to just lift that out of the way. All right, for the next step, there's a couple different ways you can do this, um, but the easiest way is probably to take it like this, open it up, hang it off the edge of, a, of whatever you're working with, a desk or whatever. There's gonna be three screws on each side. There's three here and three here under this LBDS cable. Once you got all the screws out, you can just lift the display out like this. Now we have no screen. Here's the new screen. It looks to be in really good shape. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just put this one in the same way the other one came out. Once you get the first couple in there, one on each side, you can close it back up. It makes it a lot easier to put these back in. So put in the rest of the screws. All right, now it's just a matter of putting everything back. So. First thing I guess would be this Wi-Fi bracket. So let's get that back on there. Okay, screw in the bracket. Now we can put the uh, antenna bracket back on. All right, once that's on. The last step is connecting the LVDS cable. All right, we got the cable in. All that's left to do now is install the battery. So you grab your replacement battery, you slide it in like this, okay, and then there should be three screws. I am not going to screw this down all the way, I'm just going to put it on there so that it has something on it. Um, I'm going to flip it over and check and see if it turns on before we do anything else. <laughs> Would you look at that? We got a screen. All right, we're going to see a flashing folder icon in a minute. A flashing folder icon indicates that uh, there's no operating system installed and it doesn't know what the hell to do. Yep, there it is. That is actually a good sign, guys. That means everything's connected. It seems to be working. So. Let me get the screws back on the bottom and we'll go to the next step. Okay, we got the screws back on. So what you want to do is you want to hold Command Option R and turn on your computer. When you have those keys held down, it's going to boot into recovery mode, starting internet recovery. So you're going to choose a network. I'm going to choose my Wi-Fi here. Hey, 5150, what's that in relation to? All right, we're connected to the internet. 
And now it's gonna take a few minutes here. Um, it's gonna run through uh, downloading, I believe Catalina. That's the last OS that this Mac supports. So let's give it a few minutes to do that here. All right, so what it's gonna do after it downloads it is it's going to load the Mac OS Catalina installer. And you can see the progress bar down there moving just a little bit. Here we are, we're in the recovery assistant. So, uh, the first thing that you want to do is go to Disk Utility because we installed a new disk. And here it is. We want to erase. We want to choose APFS and we want to name it something. I'm just going to name it uh, Mac OS. Oh, sorry for hitting the camera. All done. Okay, so now we got Mac OS. 2.05 it's usually it's interesting usually when you get a hard disk it's lower than it says on the box so if it's like 128 gigabytes you have like 118 gigabytes usable this is a two terabyte disk it says 2.05 that's weird all right now that we got that we're gonna hit reinstall mac os and yes i'm on battery power maybe that's stupid but um you're supposed to when you get this new battery you're supposed to uh Run it till it's at zero, and the and the computer almost dies. It has to be like under five percent. Then you charge it to a hundred percent. That's like how you calibrate the battery. So, oh, internet connection is required. I guess it forgets your Wi-Fi. So let's go back to this fifty-one fifty here. Okay, and it should be connected or connecting. There we go, connected. Reinstall Mac OS. It's running pretty slow. So. On board, there's a recovery disk on the logic board. Um, I imagine it's probably slower than our hard drive, but anyway, you accept the license agreement, you select your hard disk, and you hit install. Aqua remains, you plug in, blah blah blah. No, we're fine, we have 78% remaining. All right, so it says there's 23 minutes remaining. Oh, now it's down to 14 minutes remaining. So uh, this will take about two minutes. No, I'm kidding. It's an office reference. All right, uh, let's let this bake for a second here. All right, here we go. We're in. Let's turn up that keyboard brightness and the screen brightness a little bit. So uh, it's finished. Go through the setup process now, and then I'll come back. So now that we have a new battery in here, we need to make sure that it's calibrated. So to do that, you want to reset your SMC. So hold down Shift, Control, Option, hold the power button down. Okay, as you saw that light flashed, that means the SMC is reset. Next thing we want to do is All right, uh, now we should be good to go. Um, we should be calibrated. All right, we're up. Let's uh, make sure that everything is here that's supposed to be here. It's fast as hell, by the way. I mean, look how fast this stuff opens. 16 gigabytes, 1600 megahertz. And that's the only thing we can see right here. I could go to storage. Two terabytes available on Mac OS. There's our two dims. Display is working perfect. If we go here and go to power, check that out, cycle count zero. That is awesome. Um, and we are charging. And it looks like our full charge capacity is totally full, 8,000. Forgot to mention that we want to disable SIP. So SIP is System Integrity Protection, and what that is is it's something that prevents you from installing applications that are from unknown developers. Um, it makes it really annoying when you're trying to install third-party apps like anybody would want to do on a computer. So to do that, you uh, turn on your computer and hold Command-R. So I've got Command-R held down. And in a second, it should pop up here into recovery mode. All right, so we're here in recovery mode. Ask for your language. 
we gotta wait for it to find. Okay, so here's what we do. From here, we need to go to the terminal. So you do that utilities terminal. It's very easy, CSR util disable. Successfully disabled system integrity protection. Okay, we're done. We are now going to restart the computer. All right, we're now gonna move on and we're going to install Ventura on this computer. Yes, it can be done. It's been covered a million times, but open core legacy patcher. Um, I'm not gonna go through it because there are people that have a lot better reviews than I do or steps on how to do this, but basically you download this and you run it. It'll build a little installer and then you install it onto your USB and just run through the steps to get that installed. So I'll allow you to go if you want to know how to do that. Um, you know, like I said, there's a bunch of other videos that go through this a bit, a lot better than I could. And honestly, I'm just going to follow the guide that's right here. So I'll be back when it's got Ventura running. All right, we got Ventura installed. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Ventura 13.3.1. Running great on this Mac. So what we're going to do next is <clears throat> we are going to install this Wi-Fi adapter. So to install something like this, um, you can go to GitHub or you can search Chris1111 USB wireless USB dongle, and you can install this app that will allow you to use certain Wi-Fi adapters. This is one of them. Um, and so when you download it and try to open it, it'll say it can't verify but you can go ahead and open it anyway. And then you run through the installation and uh, you should be able to use it. I'll show you what happens after this is installed. So once you get this installed, you reboot and then you'll have a new icon up here. You can connect to your Wi-Fi network using that icon and it'll use the uh, USB. So let's connect to it and see how the speed compares. Okay, so keep in mind that we were downstairs and uh, I was literally right next to my Wi-Fi, and I was getting like 300. I'm two levels above that right now, and I'm getting higher speeds. Look at the upload. And to keep in mind, this is from two levels above where the uh, router is. So that's with the new one. Uh, let's do one with the built-in, see how it compares. So here's a test with the built-in internal. Wi-Fi. As you can see, it's a bit slower. We got almost 300 on the other ones. That's a 100 megabit increase, and that's from two levels above where... I mean, look at that. That's 180. It was at over 300 upload. With the built-in, it's... I mean, it's almost... It's doubled my upload speed for sure, and it's increased my download speed by about 40%, so definitely worth it. So there you go. Uh, we took this MacBook that was broken, had a broken screen, four gigabytes of RAM, a spinning disk, and a bad battery. And for pretty cheap, we've now got Ventura running on an SSD with 16 gigabytes of RAM, a new screen that's working absolutely perfectly, uh, and a new battery. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I know this wasn't my normal kind of video, but I wanted to make it just to, I don't know, a lot of you guys like to make your own content, make your own music and stuff, and uh, I believe this would be a good machine to do that on the cheap without having to spend 1200 bucks at uh, the Apple Store. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll be back with another video sometime soon showing you, can this computer do 4K video editing? Can this computer do audio recording? How does it do? So... We'll be back uh, with another video showing how to do that. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. And keep on rocking.